Have you ever wondered how hackers set up custom payloads to avoid antivirus and EDRs? Well, today I am here to go through a demo and show you exactly how they do it. Disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only to bring awareness. And this was all done in virtual machines, so no harm to anything was actually done. Just putting that out there, YouTube, educational content. Ethical, educational content. Thank you. So for this, we are going to be utilizing Sliver, which is a command and control framework, if you will. So it says, Sliver is a powerful command and control framework designed to provide advanced capabilities for covertly managing and controlling remote systems. With Sliver, security professionals, red teams, and penetration testers can easily establish a secure and reliable communication channel over mutual TLS, HTTP, parentheses S, DNS, or WireGuard with target machines, enabling them to execute commands, gather information, and perform various post-exploitation activities. This framework offers a user-friendly console interface, extensive functionality, and support for multiple operating systems, as well as multiple CPU architectures, making it an indispensable tool for conducting comprehensive offensive security operations. And down here, they have the getting started docs, which is very useful when doing anything. So right here on their GitHub, this is the command to download it, Linux one-liner, curling it, piping, sudo bash, and then run sliver. And then this is what it looks like downloaded. So for this one, we are gonna be using XORD obfuscated shellcode, which will bypass the AV, AKA antivirus, and a C++ loader to execute the shellcode. And then it all calls back to Sliver once it runs on the target machine. And from there, you can control the machine, you know, the back end, as they say, upload and download files, take screenshots, etc. And this idea came from one of my Discord mods. If you're not a part of the Discord, link is in the description. The Discord is pretty cool if I do say so myself, is my Discord, and I'm not biased. So you typed Sliver after downloading it. It's running. Open up a new tab, and then you're going to type Sliver-Server. As you see down here, it says Server. This one is just Sliver. You have the Sliver Server and then the Sliver Client. That's a tongue twister. And then we set up a listener, type HTTP. Set up the listener. Then new tab. If config, not IP config. Get your IP. Here it is, 10.0.2.15. Then go back to the server. Now this will generate the shellcode payload with this command. Generating for the OS, Windows, AMD64, format shellcode, HTTP, and then the IP of this machine that you're on right now. And then implant save to home Kirby historic sandwich.bin which is just the random name that Sliver gave the payload. So we're going to generate a new one. RIP historic sandwich. You were loved and you're going to be missed. New one. Thanks. All right. New one. Stale vermicelli. I don't know what that is, but we're going with it. Now, creating a Python script. New tab. As you can see, up here, nano. This was the old one. Now we're naming it XOR underscore encode1.py. And if you're wondering why the name is weird, this is just the name Sliver gives the shellcode. So you are just XOR obfuscating the shellcode using 0 by 42 Won't get into it in detail. Also, this is the second time I filmed this and it's getting dark outside. Anyway, we're going to exit, save it. Yes, we're going to run it. And then we ran it. It says shellcode encrypted with XOR key 0x42. Now we are nanoing injector 1, which is our shellcode injector written in C++, which this loads the XOR ossificated file, the shellcode stale vermicelli.bin, and then decrypts it with the XOR key 0x42, and then loads it into the executable allocated memory, as they say and then it executes it via a new thread. So we save this, and then let's copy this one, 
paste it in there. And this is just cross compiling for Windows. So it's not historic sandwich anymore. Oh, I copied the entire thing again. Paste the exe and then injector one. And then we run it and it's compiled for Windows. If you notice anything different, it's the next morning. I could not get my virtual machines last night to connect together to serve up the executable on a Python server. I spent about two hours last night trying to get my VMs to connect to my Python server. You think it would be simple. Well, with VirtualBox, I don't think anything is simple and I don't think it ever works correctly. <laughs> so I transferred everything over to VMware. So let us continue from where we left off which for me was last night, which for you was about 30 seconds ago. So this is Python server, spin it up, Python dash M, HTTP dot server, port 8080. So this is just my home directory. And as you can see, I just spin up a new shell code. So that's why the name is different. <laughs> this one is nasty underscore relation. Weird, but cool. So we have these downloaded in our downloads, nastyrelation.exe. So let us run it. And wait, hold on. I have to go into security. <laughs> so as you can see, virus and threat protection is on. Real-time protection on. Let's turn that on. Antivirus enabled. True. So let's see if the claims are true. Will this executable bypass Windows EDR slash AV? Let's see. Now, session. Okay. Hello, Bob's. No sessions, but it, it ran though. It ran. Oh, cancel that. <laughs> okay, I think we're getting somewhere. With open, what was it? XOR.bin? I think that is the issue. We're getting somewhere. Exit. Yes. Let's see. That popped up. No session still, but we're getting closer. I've been at this for about an hour and a half now. A total of so many hours working on this. So let's cat xor.py cat. No, what else do I need to cat? Injector cat. Okay. Okay, so the command line stuff is popping up. xor.bin xor.py. Okay, I'm just gonna name it the exact same thing. So just rename it for good measure, xor.bin. xor.bin, and then recompile it, ls, xor.exe, xor.py, xor.bin. Back here, delete these guys. Just have it all refresh. Here we go, xor.bin, xor.bin, xor.exe, okay. Let's see. Windows protected your PC. Thank you. More info. Hello. Oh, okay. Shellcode decrypted, memory allocated, Windows EDR evasion by CyberMatty shellcode executed via ThreadX, whatever. Come on. Guys, we finally got it. After many hours, many trials and tribulations. Let's fucking go, chat. Anyway, I thought I already popped a shell. Does it not already pop a shell? Okay, so here it is. It is a shell. Now to preface, we do not type shell because that would alert the AV. So we do use, what's the ID? 765C5ED1. Okay, no dir. Okay, let's go to info. There we go, yes. Sorry, I'm excited. Actually, not sorry. But I, yes, I, I was working on this three hours last night. I've been working on this for about four-ish hours because I've never really, you know, compiled or XORed or anything before. So I was just kind of going in here blind, but we did it. So let's fucking go. And here, let's fucking go. Through trials and tribulations, we bypassed Windows, AV, Defender, EDR, whatever and got remote access, AKA got a shell without alerting Windows Defender.
And just to confirm, no current threats. Let's do a quick scan. And then no actions needed. Everything's up, everything's enabled. No current threats. And antivirus enabled. True. So everything is enabled. So thanks for coming along for the journey. It was a long one, but we did it successfully. Windows, AV, evasion, can pop a shell. Windows won't even know. So make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I will see you in the next video.